Okay, welcome back to this session about the green transition in fisheries. Our next speaker now is Jacob Grieg Eide. He is the Chief Business Development Officer at Skantol Deep Vision, and he will be talking to us about the Deep Vision um, Com Sounder. Welcome, Jacob. Thank you. Can everybody hear me? Yeah? It's great to be here. Um, I'm very, uh, to be honest, I'm very proud being here. And this North Fishing, we are sort of launching the Deep Vision Cam Sounder, I would say after 10 to 15 years of research and development. Um, I think we have developed something really important for the fisheries and for the research and uh, for those de dealing with the stock assessment. So I will um, take you through a little bit of history. I will uh, definitely talk about what the Camp Center can do. And I hope everybody's here won't become very interested in what we do and can visit us at the, our boot at uh, G706. So. Um, I think, like, occasionally there is a uh, new technology that emerges and can change an industry. And I th hope that during these 10, 12, 15 minutes, you will understand that what we are presenting had really potential to change fishing to the better, to make marine research much more efficient and to make the stock assessment much more accurate and more efficient as well. And of course, sustainability is part of this. So there is a background here which is not that good. Over 90% of the global commercial fish stocks are overfished. There's a lot of sort of discharge of bycatch, which can't continue. The uh, population of the, the, the world is growing rapidly and we need to produce so much more protein. So the ocean needs to deliver, but we need to do things in a different way. M far much more sustainable, far much more efficient. So actually we need to develop new tools, new technology, and new ways of, of working, uh, harvesting the ocean. So it's... Um, so this is a little of the backdrop here, which is uh, not good. So new technology, new ways of working is needed. So if we go a little bit back on history, uh, we have been working with um, sort of with deep vision for 15 years. Started as a concept and then moved into marine research. Um, we have been sort of luckily working very closely with CRISP and CRIMOC and uh, with sort of big sort of projects and, um, of course, close with IMR in Norway, to, to make them much more efficient um, uh, harvesting the data they need for marine research. So what we're looking here is actually sort of a, I would, I would say, like a photo studio, where the fish sort of pass through the trawl here, and we take the images, so they can do their analysis and the machine learning to look at the sizes, the distribution, what kind of species, and so forth. So uh, this is in a sort of a, there was a new way of doing marine research, applying this kind of technology. But it's, as you see, it's large, it's, it's, it's big, I mean, you need a crane. Um, so there's a lot of sort of limitations, but there, were, there, was, there was a start, and it gained a lot of knowledge, it has gained a lot of data, there's millions of images of different species that's taken. It's still in operation, so it works. So we're quite proud of this. And it gained us in the efficient a lot of knowledge moving forward. So um, for, for the marine research and uh, resource management stock assessment, uh, we, we made it possible to sort of uh, collect much more digital images and data efficient with this. So they can use this for AI and machine learning, and uh, you know, removing sort of the need for catching a lot of fish, which they just discharge it. So there, this is a big change, I think, for marine research. They can actually sit there and, in more or less real time, watch what is passing by into the trawl, see what kind of species and 
sizes and yeah. So here you can actually see some sort of sort of that tool. You can see a whole trawl. You can see where the vessel has been, and you can see the images of the fish passing by. So it's, it's a lot of there's a lot of benefits here for the research. If we move into fisheries, which is more, I think is a, we need to use a little bit more time on today. They have a lot of questions out there when they are fishing. They are asking themselves, what kind of fish is now entering the trawl? I don't know. Hope it's uh, the target species. I don't hope it's a lot of unwanted bycatch. Is it a good size? Is the trawl speed and direction correct for my catch? Should I continue here? Should I go somewhere else? This is the way the fishing is sort of done today. It's a lot of stomach feelings, a lot of experience, but they don't know really what they are catching, and that's a big, big problem. That's a big problem not knowing what they're catching before they land the catch. So here you can see just a typical image of a trawl. Coming on board with a lot of different species, different sizes, and they don't know what they catch before it's landed, and they don't know where they actually catch the valuable catch. They don't know where probably I should go back to get the more clean catch. So here you have a lot of bycatch, unwanted bycatch. Probably a lot of sizes you don't so you get low value. So this is a big, big problem. But today there is no technology that can really solve it. And um, until we develop the cam sounder, which I'm going to show you, how we can change this, how we can provide the fisheries with real-time understanding of what they're fishing as they fish, so they can actually do proactive decisions out there. And get much more cleaner catch, much more efficient, using less fuel, less days at sea. So we can go, and go a little bit deeper into that. It was a big challenge. Uh, we needed to really rebuild this technology, going from about 400 kilos to 15 kilos, from say 1.5 meter to 0.5 meter. This is not very flexible. It's not adaptable for the fisheries. They needed something really small, small, something that's easy to attach to the trawl, uh, easy to use, um, and we needed something that was even better than this, that was more capable, that could also communicate wirelessly to the vessel in real time. And we also understood that we needed to add not only cameras, we needed to add some ecosound capabilities to the same biomass. Uh, in order to do much more uh, important calculations, for example, estimating biomass. Uh, we so here we look at actually quite a sort of a revolution. I r really, will, if people are interested, go, come to our booth and we can show you. So here you look at what we think is a complete revolution in fishery. It, it will change uh, fishery as we believe. We have um, installed stereo camera. We have integrated echo sounder. It's very compact. You can run it for eight hours. Um, we have an acoustic link to the vessel. It wireless, and then do all the edge computing on the edge. You don't process. You don't need to process much on the vessel. So it will provide you based on what your quota is and what you want to catch in real time. Never done before, so you move. I would say fishing from this stomach feeling to facts. So um, this is the cam sounder. Really proud, and we strongly believe this will change fishing. But also, this now is the new tool for marine research, and also for and also for those who want to do efficient stock assessment on the cruises. So there's a lot of projects that going, we're going to start. And there are a lot of colleagues here from Deep Vision. We also have people from Sintaf here. 
So we're moving into some really exciting projects. One, for example, on shrimps to develop algorithms for shrimp, which is a, a part of fishing that we need to make more efficient and reduce the bycatch problems. So we're moving into a lot of projects where we develop the algorithms needed for, um, for that specific uh, fishery. So um, I'm going to show you a little bit more of that. So this is how it works. You, you install it easily in the trawl. It communicates up to the vessel. The cam cylinder runs continuously to do all the calculations on the, bio, the incoming biomass. So, uh, so the skipper now knows what kind of fish is it, what is the size distribution, do I have a lot of bycatch here, I should, should I go somewhere else, should I move, should I change speed. Um, we also can give uh, signals to excluder systems if they, if, if they want that installed so you can open and close, close the, um, the trawl. So there's a lot of possibilities with, uh, with the cam sounder. Here you can see uh, colleague uh, Eric is here. He was on board uh, Ramuan. And we only did, I think, four trolls, and we had enough images to start making algorithms for whitefish and redfish in order for the fisheries here to, to reduce uh, the bycatch issue in this kind of fishery, which is really important. So for some algorithms, it probably go fast to, to build the start algorithms. They will come better as we get more and more images and more and more information. And some will be, of course, more complex, and we probably use a year or two or something to build a proper algorithm. So here you can actually see um, from I cruise we did with the Swedish SLU uh, on the herring, three types of herring. Um, if you look at the image on the left here, just, just to explain sort of the power of the technology, when, when the trawl is finished, you can actually know where you got the different species and you can think of where I should go back to have a much more cleaner. This also represents, I think, a revolution for fisheries and for those uh, who want to operate uh, more accurately on, on data instead of stomach feeling. So I'm coming back to, I really believe that this kind of technology is going to change fishing for good. There's a shift, total shift in what's possible. And um, I think, yeah, we re really believe that the real-time tracking and analysis could be this kind of breakthrough technology that we all have been waiting for that we can change fishing and work more efficiently with the ocean. So I think that's my time is over, I think. Hope there is some questions and hope to see people on the boot and yeah. Amazing presentation. Thank you. We have actually time for uh, one question. One question. Yes, because you used that uh, some time. So yes, please. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Just wondering, to what depth is it rated? Uh, at, at the moment, we have, um, we have a pressure uh, tested it for close to 1,000 meters. Okay, we have time for one more short question. Anyone? Really short? Yes, please. What is the accuracy rate in terms of uh, species identification, size estimation? Have you done some tests? Related to that? Mm, I would say probably no on the cam sounder. Uh, but if we look at the, the resolution and the way the camera works, um, and depends on different factors, of course, the, the um, accuracy of the algorithms and the size of the fish and the amount of fish, and so. To be honest, it's, uh, we don't have enough data for the cam sounder to say exactly the accuracy of that. But we believe it should be with the hardware and what we have installed in the cam sounder so far, it should be quite accurate, I think. Yeah. 
Thank you very much for such amazing presentation and thank you the audience for the questions. Thank you.